Another fine point about friction that I like to highlight is these type of questions where it seems easy enough. You're pulling a block, and so you find Fn, then you find friction, and it's sliding, and you can work out what the friction is, what the acceleration is, etc., etc. But the one big thing that a lot of students tend to take a shortcut and often get wrong on is they just see the geometry and assume that normal force equals mg. Well, not true because the pulling force, the applied force here, has a vertical component to it. This vertical component is going to make your normal force not equal to mg, which would in turn affect your friction magnitude, which would then affect your acceleration and all that stuff. We're just working on um, 63 here, but there's some data that we needed from 62, so I've included those few lines here. Basically, the things we need is we have a mass of 45 kilogram, and that we're talking about ice across a frozen lake. So when we talk about ice on ice, we have to look up the friction coefficients, and that's in table 6.1 in your textbook right here. We have ice on ice. We have static of 0.1 and kinetic of 0 0.03. Especially ice, the um, static coefficient of friction tends to be significantly higher than the kinetic one. That's true normally because you can think of how the, um, the two objects has not settled into each other's grooves, but as you move ice over ice, you create that little bit of heat. It also melts the water a little bit to give it that little bit of lubricant. To really reduce that friction. Let's just go through this. So let's start with part A. We're going to think about how what was the minimum force to get the block moving. That's a very popular phrasing, minimum force, because we remember that your force of friction, when not moving, you're dealing with static coefficient of friction and you're dealing with this inequality. So we can't solve. But if we're talking about the minimum force just before it starts moving. So instead of not moving, we're going to just before moving. Then we can say that friction is working as hard as it can. So we're talking about maximum static friction. So then we can actually use it as an equal sign. That's the maximum limit we're talking about here. But because it's just before moving, my acceleration is still zero. So based on those information, we can solve and get what we need. To solve, of course, we need free body diagram. So here's my block. The block has a tension or some kind of external force on it with a known angle and unknown magnitude. It's touching the ground, so that's going to have a normal component to that force as well as a friction component, and of course the friction acts backwards because without it, the whole block will slide forward based on this external force. And this thing is on Earth, so it's got mg. Now, none of the vectors are drawn to size, so we're just caring about the direction here because we have to decompose them along the x and the y in order to get my sum of forces. So if we do sum of forces, we know that that's equal to ma, which is equal to zero. And so we list out all my forces then. We have f cosine 25 positive i plus f sine 25 positive j plus fn and the j plus negative mg and the j, and of course plus negative ff. These are all magnitudes in this case now that I'm dropping all the vector sign because I know the direction based on the i and j component, and the negative i for the friction. So to find out the size of friction, we can use this, which means we need first my normal force. To get the normal force, we look at the j component, and we see that we have 0 is equal to these three things add up together. Solving for fn, and here's the key to this question big giant star here, 
that my Fn is not just mg, nor is it on a plane. It's not mg cosine theta or whatever. You have to have to look at the sum of forces in the vertical component or the y component, sum of the forces to get you zero to see that your normal force in this case is mg minus the vertical component of the pulling force. So you gotta do this every time because it's hard to tell how many forces there are on the vertical direction. So now that we have Fn, we can easily enough find my FF. In this case, we are dealing with static friction because it's just about to move. So that now we have FF, we can go ahead and look at my horizontal components, which again adds up to zero. So my friction subbed in, and we can collect like terms. First, expanding this out first, so we have, and that's a plus, because it's a negative of negative, goes zero. Then we swing my mu s mg over, factoring that f out, and so we just do the divide. m, of course, here is 45 kilograms, G is our usual 9.81 meters per second square. And mu s, we've found as 0.1, looking up on the table. This gives me an f of, once we divide, to start sliding, we must pull with 46.5 newton, the minimum force. Then part b talks about how if we maintain that force, so we know already that the force is whatever we found, what is the acceleration? Well, it's not zero anymore because my FF, now that you're moving, is going to be a little smaller because it's going to use the kinetic friction coefficient. So as the friction gets smaller, but my force is maintained, you're going to get an unbalanced force, allowing the block to accelerate forward. Now most of the analysis will be very similar to above, so I'm going to save some step and just reuse some of the results that I have from above, because you have mg, fn, and the f stayed the same. So because we know that this block is not going to fly up and down, we know that my acceleration is only going to have an x component, given again we define x and y as such, and it's zero j. So the j component equation doesn't change at all. So if we do the j equation again, we'll once again find that my fn is equal to mg minus f sine 25 degrees. So now my ff is equal to mu k fn, and so we write something that's very similar to what we had before. These are all known numbers, of course, so we can actually find out the force. But let's just write everything out first. So in the I component, we have MA, which is the acceleration in the horizontal and the only component of the acceleration. It's equal to, you have your F cosine 25 degrees pulling forward minus your FF pulling backwards. And it's just a matter of subbing in numbers. Ice on ice, 0 0.3, all over the mass of 45 kilograms. And that's what we got from the calculator. So we can say that many meters per second square. Simple enough once you get used to it, as long as you don't skip steps. Make sure to draw a full free body diagram labeling your x and y and decompose everything and always sum your forces along the x and the y, solving for the appropriate variable that you might need. And oftentimes that includes the normal force because it's quite rare that we can have a direct measurement of the normal force.